Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. <clears throat> yeah, this is some heavy duty stuff tonight. Isaiah chapter 1. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O ye heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of your foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and of fat fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons, your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, Ye shall eat the good of the land, but if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Thy silver is become dross, thy wine mixed with water. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Every one loveth gifts and followeth after 
rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore saith the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. And I will restore thy judges as at the first and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired. And ye shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen. For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water. And the strong shall be as tow, and the maker of it as a spark. And they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. <sighs> Pat's two cents. When I read that, I see us today. I see the treachery in government. I see the malice in families. Men forcing women to sell their bodies on the street so that they can make bank while the women get their butts whooped by you. Who they're working for. When I look around at what's happening with this society. It still. It, it makes me marvel. At God's mercy. And his patience. It's a real good thing I'm not God. This whole thing would have been wiped out a long time ago. Real good thing. I'm not capable of the kind of love that he has. None of us are. But here's the sad part. Everything that he requires of us is based on love. Because with all of God's wisdom, he knows that love changes us for the better. Love makes us think of others. Love causes us to be considerate of another person's needs, not just our own. Love will make us put our desires on the back burner in order to make sure that that person's needs get met. Because we don't need what we want. We just want to play. But that person has dire, distressed needs. And we have the ability to fill those needs. And love will cause us to lay aside the vacation. Love will cause us to hold off from buying the car to help the person who is in dire need. But when you look at today and you look at the sins of the world, because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. Now, you cannot tell me that a man loves his wife when for the slightest little annoyance or just because he feels like it, she's got to peel herself off the floor and off the wall with black eyes and broken ribs and, and broken clavicles and busted kneecaps and, and, and aborted babies because the baby has been kicked 
by the man's foot repeatedly in the hopes of killing the baby. You can't tell me that that's love. There's no love anywhere in that. That is demonic as hell. You can't sit there and tell me you love your child when you can raise your hand and backslap him and, and send him sailing across the room, busting their head, and then telling them to get up and clean the blood up and don't let no mess be on your rug and your furniture or you will tear them up. You already tore them up. The only thing left to do is just kill him and get it and get him out of their misery. You can't tell me you love your child. And you you manhandle them that way. You can't tell me you love your child and you're screwing them every other night. You get drunk, you crawl in the bedroom, and you're messing over your kid and you're messing them up. And you think God is happy when you sit your little happy hips in church and you clap to the, to the music and the praise songs and you stand when they say stand and you sit when they say sit and you act like you're praying when they say pray. But you know you just got through wiping the floor with your kid or you just got through smearing up the bed with your nastiness on your child's body in incest. And you think God is blind. God doesn't know. God ain't no flunky baby. He knows it all. That's, I mean, he's kind enough to say, come, let us reason together. But you don't even want to reason. Because that's not where you get your jollies. You get your jollies off of hurting people. Making people cry, overpowering them, abusing them, molesting them, raping them. I remember my mother told me something happened in New York. I wished I had been alive at that time. I probably would have bought a, a Gatlin gun and shot everybody up in the neighborhood, especially the guys that did the, the crime. My mother said it was in the news. It's, I think this was before I was born or when I was too young to remember. She said that there was a little boy. Everybody in the neighborhood could hear this boy screaming at the top of his lungs. I mean, screaming. Nobody called the cops. Nobody. Because they didn't want to get involved. Nobody drove around to see where the screaming is coming from. Nobody thought to go to the boy's rescue. Blood curdling screams for hours and hours. Imagine your child going through something like that. Because some sicko who had no love in his heart Got his nuts off. Tearing that boy's behind her. And when the cops finally, somebody, I don't know, found him or I don't know how he got found. He was in an abandoned building. Dead. He wasn't strangled. He wasn't stabbed. He wasn't beaten to death. He was raped mercilessly, repeatedly. The reason he died was because his poor little behind couldn't take any more. And he bled to death. What kind of a monster could do something like that? Could Hand, could deal with those screams and not stop. Because sin will abound. The love of many wax cold. Just waxes cold. Love just 
in the wind, just psh, dust in the wind. What love? What are you talking about? I don't have time for love. You better do what I tell you to do. You know what's good for you. What the heck are you doing with the person? Why are you even sharing a home with them? If all you have for them is a... Help me, Lord. I want to say it so bad. For effect. But I won't. If all you have for them is an aspirin whooping. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. If all you got is that baby. Let them go free my God. Let them have a chance at life before you take it away. What could possibly make you enjoy hurting people like that? What could possibly make you enjoy raping people? Raping little kids. I'm done. Because I'm on a rampage. And when I get in these little things, there is no shutting me up. I got to shut myself up. We need to pray that folks get saved. We need to pray for the most brutal people. I do understand that a lot of them have been brutalized themselves. And that's all they know is brutality. We have got to pray against these demons that are cutting loose. You think things have been bizarre? You think things have been inhuman? inhumane whatever the word is you ain't seen nothing yet baby that's why we need to pray these are the last days and the best of the best of demons are cutting loose now what are we going to do about it